Hey, good afternoon. It is uh, the 26th of April 2021, and uh, I was thinking, like I think often, about currency and um, what is money, and you know, they're just the things that I've really been studying and, and, and thinking about for the last little while, last couple years. And uh, I've been getting my pilot's license. Um, I just love to learn and love to learn new things. And at the Rexburg Airport, there is a glass countertop and underneath it, it's just a whole bunch of currencies from, or bills, um, like, you know, bill currencies from all over the world. You know, it's really cool. You know, it's cool to look and see that there's pesos and there's colonies and there's um, money from Haiti and you know, whatever it is. I don't, I don't know where all the currency is from. <clears throat> But I was also looking, and I didn't see any $100 bills in there. You know, no one's just slipping a $100 bill underneath that, underneath that table. But there, there are currencies there that are like, you know, 500 Zimbabwe whatevers, or 500 Venezuelan whatevers. Why is that? Well, it's, it's the same thing that brought down Weimar Germany that brought down the mark in Germany. It's the same thing that is killing our dollar right now. And it's the same reason why people are willing to bring currency back and put it underneath a, a piece of glass. It is an inflationary currency that's government controlled. So what do they do? Well, we need more velocity of money in order to make the economy you know do its thing and increase well in Keynesian economics they say print print that money get it out to the people and then a unit of debt is the important part of economics right so um, pretty much the, the dollar is a unit of debt and the more we can get that out and the more in debt we can get people the more the economy is running well I don't think that it works that way <clears throat> personally um, I'm more like kind of believe in the Austrian economic side of things which is uh, backing our currency um, with something so actually having sound money hard money money that's backed um, using silver, gold, I don't know, maybe cryptocurrency, something that makes it a limited supply, something that is um, infinitely divisible, easily transportable, um, and, and I think I said it, a, a fixed supply. It's really important. We don't think about it because we're never taught to think about it. We don't care because we're not taught to care. We just live our lives and we do what we're told. Um, but I actually think it's really important. And if you look at any, like truly any country that has failed, which is pretty much every country that has been around long enough, there are certain things that have happened that have led to their demise, that have led to their downfall. And one theme that rings true one theme that is linked among all of these different countries and empires is that they started to inflate their currency they started to add to the supply something that didn't exist before so even in Rome what they would do is as a new a new Caesar or a new emperor would come along they would ask for everybody's gold and silver back and then they would re-mint them with the new emperor or whatever on, on them. Well, they started to learn that if they took I'm just going to use um, huge numbers here because I'm not smart enough to think in small numbers. Well, let's say you have a pound and they're like, alright, here's a pound of gold and it's got Caesar number two printed on it and then Caesar number three gets in 
and he goes, okay, well, if we make this 0.95 pounds, the people aren't gonna see it. They're not gonna understand. And then what happens? Well, the same supply is there. It just looks different. There's the same amount of gold, but they make it look different. Well, all of a sudden, those empires become richer, falsely richer. Well, then we get this crazy idea that we can go away from weights and measures and gold and silver and, and we can just start to print a currency. And now we can get away from printing. Now we can go to putting numbers into a computer. Well, what happens? We are sure adding a lot to the supply. And a lot doesn't even explain it. It is absolutely ridiculous the amount of, of, of money that's being added to the supply. If you start looking into things like, just Google M1 money supply, uh, look at quantitative easing and all the different QEs that they've done, all the different quantitative easings that they've done. Uh, we are, we're not, we're not in a great place. Um, we're actually in a very, very scary place. Um, it doesn't have to be that way though, right? It doesn't have to be that way. We just have to have awareness of what's happening. We have to fix ourselves and our own financial future and then bring awareness to others and fix it. We need to talk people into voting. Sorry, we need to talk people, well, into voting as well. We need to talk people into uh, running for office who don't want to be in office, but smart people uh, that that understand economics and and know monetary and fiscal policy. You cannot spend your way out of problems. You might be able to temporarily, right? Every empire, every country has done it. They've begun, began to, to spend their way out of problems until the problems are stacked and there's not an there's not an there's no way to get out of it we're on our way there right now um, the federal reserve balance sheet has doubled over the past year like i said look into m1 money supply and look into quantitative easing it is it is crazy and when the federal reserve comes out and says that they're targeting two percent inflation well one why are they targeting inflation there's an answer to that but if you're believing in sound money principles and actually backing your money by something, um, then why are we trying to target 2% inflation? Um, I don't want to hear the, the, the doctorate in economics try to explain that because they're not going to explain it in a sound money way. They're going to explain it in, in a units of debt and that, that it's unsustainable. So look into that stuff. Um, talk people into running for office who do not want to run for office and then hold them accountable to fix things within four years or you know whatever term limits we decide uh, that, that they get because most people are going to get into politics they're going to find out that it's an extremely lucrative business to be in and uh, then they're just going to want to get reelected. they're not going to care as much uh, as they did when they got in they are going to care about re-election and that huge paycheck that they get every single month for being an elected representative of their constituency. So vote in the right people, talk them into it, vote them in, hold them accountable, term limits. That's, that's the key to all of this is fixing our money problem and term limits. I, I really think that those are the two ways that we, we fix the problems that we're in. Um, we are so far away from where we should be, in my opinion, so far away from the founding principles of this country. And I really believe that the only way to get back there is to fix our money and to turn career politicians into termed representatives. Politics are stupid. <laughs> if I'm gonna use my, uh, my, my higher education to say big words, politics are stupid. So that's my thought. Those are my thoughts for the day. Have a great day. We can make all of this better.
really can't 